Hello, my name is Frank Christensen and I'm the coordinator of officials for IFF in Europe. This is the third of seven training tapes dealing with targeting. Today we're looking specifically at, at hits on players away from the play. So we'll have a look at, at, at what, is, what is too much and how should we cover these situations where players are, are away from the action but they're still getting hit. But before we get to the game film, let's have a look to see what the rulebook and the MOFO have to say on this topic. In the rulebook, a defenseless player is defined in 227.14 as a defenseless player is one who, because of his physical position and position and focus of concentration, is especially vulnerable to injury. When in question, a player is defenseless. Example of defenseless players include but are not limited to a a player in the act of or just after throwing a pass b a receiver attempting to catch a forward pass or in position to receive a backward pass or one who has completed a catch and has not had time to protect himself or has not clearly become a ball carrier c a kicker in the act of or just after kicking a ball or during the kick or the return D, a kick returner attempting to catch or recover a kick, or one who has completed a catch or recovery and has not had time to protect himself or has not clearly become a ball carrier. E, a player on the ground. F, which is also the focus of this training tape, a player obviously out of the play. G, a player who receives a blindside block. H, ball carrier already in the grasp of an opponent and whose forward progress has been stopped. I, a quarterback, any time after change of possession. And finally, J, ball carrier who has obviously given himself up and is sliding feet first. Rule 235 goes on to define targeting. It says, targeting means that a player takes aim at an opponent for purposes of attacking with forcible contact that goes beyond making a legal tackle or legal block or playing the ball. Some indicators of targeting include but are not limited to A. a launch. A player leaving his feet to attack an opponent by an upward and forward thrust of the body to make forcible contact in the head or neck area. B. A crouch followed by an upward and forward thrust to attack with forcible contact at the head or neck area, even though one or both feet are still on the ground. C. Leading with helmet, shoulder, forearm, fist, hand or elbow to attack with forcible contact at the head or neck area. And D. Lowering the head before attacking by initiating forcible contact with the crown of the helmet. In rule 913, crown of the helmet is defined. No player shall target and make forcible contact against an opponent with the crown of his helmet. The crown of the helmet is the portion of the helmet above the level of the top of the face mask. This file requires that there be at least one indicator of targeting. When in question, it is a foul. And 914 says no player shall target and make forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless opponent with the helmet, forearm, hand, fist, elbow, or shoulder. This file requires that there be at least one indicator of targeting. When in question, it is a foul. In the MOFO, we go to penalty administration in the points of emphasis 131. E says, if your flag is for targeting, you must have direct verbal communication with at least one other official prior to reporting the foul to the referee. And we finish off in penalty administration under calling fouls 1911. Number 8 says, if your flag is for targeting, you must have direct verbal communication with at least one other official prior to reporting the foul to the referee. Rarely does targeting occur when there are not multiple views of the action. Because the penalty involves mandatory disqualification, we require this communication to reduce the risk of an incorrect call. 
And that was the book. Now, let's have a look at some game film. On this first play, we're looking at the receiver down here at the bottom. He's going to run a, a slant of his sword, and then the safety's going to come in. But, you know, the timing of it is right there. The ball is gone, and then the safety takes, you know, a number of, of, of steps, and then he hits him. So, you know, the, the reason this is not a defenseless receiver, but actually a, a, a player out of the play, is that even without the high hit here, this would still qualify as a as a late hit or an unnecessary roughness. So this is not, you know, somebody to trying to break up a pass. This is uh, this is well after the the pass is gone, and then the safety decides to hit him anyway. And then when he does it with the with the high hit, that's what ta takes it to the to the targeting category so let's have a look here to say so he's out of the play he's now a defenseless player uh, the safety comes in lowers the shoulder uh, kind of crouches down and delivers forcible contact to the head and neck area I mean the helmet even comes off so this is uh, this is good dead ball officiating and, and, and a good call by these two deep officials On the second play, we're also looking at the receiver down here at the bottom, uh, A2. And again, you know, he's going to come across. The pass is going to go through his hands. And, and it, you know, you can almost say that he, he lets up. It, uh, there's such a big delay from the ball goes through his hands right there. You know, the, the linebacker is uh, seven, eight yards away from him, takes several steps. And again, this is not... Uh, part of the pass breakup which is why a2 is now a player uh, a receiver out of the play and this hit is completely unnecessary and would warrant uh, a personal foul flag even if it hadn't been high here it is also high you know we've got the defenseless receiver then we've got the forcible contact uh, and we'll get a better shot at it from the end zone view um, but the forcible contact and the and the contact to the head or neck area, and this is something that uh, that should have been called as a targeting. But let's have a look at the end zone shot also. From the end zone shot, we get a better sense of the actual hit by B16. And here we've got the receiver coming in right there. And then if we try to freeze it right there we get a good sense of you know the receiver being defenseless he's even looking for the ball uh, so he is out of the play and we've got the uh, the linebacker coming in um, almost in a crouch uh, you know you could even talk about uh, crown of the helmet maybe what we can't see exactly where he's hitting but there certainly is forcible contact uh, to the head neck area so this this should have been called I think the officials in this situation got too focused on where the ball was going to go and whether or not it was going to get intercepted so I think that's why nobody saw it but uh, certainly this should have been called as a personal foul targeting uh, on B16 and that was the, the short training tape on defenseless players out of the play uh, I hope it made sense, and I hope you found something you can use on the field.